Good morning and welcome from Grace Episcopal Church via the Ashby front porch for this morning's service of morning prayer. Just a moment, please, as I'm trying to make sure we get going. Here, there's it's a place to get what's live down. I go live now. Good. I thought you knew how to get on this. You usually can get on this. Please be, please be patient with us as we try to make sure that I've figured out how to properly do this. This this is the problem of older clergy are not yet, shall we say, adept at these modern, modern technologies. My wife is trying to see if she can get on live to make sure that I can be heard. Or if any of you can comment, please let me know, know if you can hear me at this point through the comment box, or if you can see me. We will certainly be going here in a moment, I hope. Thank you, Marcia. I understand you can hear me and see me, so I will begin. Again, this is morning prayer, July 26th, 2020, from the Ashley Front Porch. And I hope that this works. As you can see, as you can tell, I am not adept at this technology. So, here goes. For those of you who are able to print off the bulletin, I invite you to follow along, or if, though, if you do not have the bulletin, to simply sit and enjoy the beauty of this morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry we have to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is verses 11 through 17 of Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nettermost pit. The arrogant rise, arrogant rise up against me, O Lord, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. For you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. 
Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for a night because the sun had set. Take one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be with you, blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was, And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up there for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. And he called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the stuff that do says, Domine, I will read it all, and you're invited to join in on the alternate verses. Glory to you, God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you, are, you put the, to death the death of the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but of the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the glory, freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is, not, is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will read all of it, and you're invited to join in on the alternate verses. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we are His ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. He be thankful to him unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus put the crowd before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. And while everybody was asleep, the enemy, an enemy came and sowed seed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would root uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers. Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are, are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. What I want to share with you this morning is not so much a formal sermon as a few thoughts about the gospel, and particularly the gospel and the Old Testament lesson for today. But I want to begin by reading you a few words spoken by one of my heroes and icon of the civil rights movement, Congressman John Lewis, who died this morning, who said, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something, to say something and not be quiet. It is this kind of action taken by John Lewis who said he was always getting into good trouble, the trouble that Dr. King invited him, encouraged him into, that led him to be known as the conscience of Congress and to be a spokesperson who was respected by those on all sides of the political spectrum for his integrity and his courage and his commitment to right. It is that kind of truth that spoke as a 23 year old on Selma's bridge or at the March on Washington. And it is the kind of truth that continues to in our hearts today in light of the situation in which we find ourselves, the issues which we are facing as a country and as a nation. And I think it is important that we listen to Dr. Lewis, Mr. Lewis. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something, to say something, and not be quiet. I hear these words in contrast, or at least alongside, this morning's gospel lesson. And in fact, one of the sermons I read this week as I was preparing to talk about this lesson upset me quite a bit. It was one that suggested that the real teaching here is that we might be, almost went so far as to suggest, I'm not sure it's exactly what the author intended, but suggested to a certain degree that we should sit back and do nothing. Wait and allow God to take care of the evil in our world at the end of the ages. And that disappointed me and upset me because I'm not sure how that goes along with the words we've been hearing the last few weeks in which Jesus said he was came to bring division and not a sword. How it all goes along with the, the example of the disciples who challenged injustice in their world and of our Lord who continually spoke to inequality, injustice and oppression and called for a change and called, talked of a kingdom that was coming into the world, not just at the end, but even now that would address these issues. So how do we make sense of Mr. Lewis's words on one hand and these words from the gospel on the other hand? I thought perhaps that one of the answers might be to look at a little bit more about what the weeds might have been, looking at the, in terms of what those who heard the, the original hearers of Jesus would have heard. 
the weeds are suggested to be what was known as Darnell. And it was a weed that looked very much like the wheat that was grown. And in fact, in the early stages, up until almost the time the wheat was ripe, you could hardly tell the difference. And at the end, you could tell the difference because the stalks of wheat would bend over under the weight of the grain, where the stalks of the darnel would continue to be straight. And then you could see the difference. And so then you could understand Jesus saying, then you will be able to tell which weeds to pull and not harm the crop. And to a certain degree, that makes sense. And it reminds us we always need to be aware of our tendency to judge what are the good weeds and the bad weeds on our own values and be careful not to substitute ourselves in place of God. And then the Old Testament lesson kind of goes along with that too, because we've got the story of Jacob and Jacob's ladder. Now, as I alluded to next last week, and as we'll be hearing over the last several weeks, Jacob was an unrepentant scoundrel. He was a con man who took advantage of just about everyone in his life, beginning with his brother Esau, his father, his father-in-law, and everyone else. To be honest, most of us looking at it objectively at outsider would say Jacob was more like a Darnell in the field of God's people than, than grain. And so maybe we need to be very careful about judging. But how do we still speak the truth in life? Mr. Lewis had another quote that I think might be instructive. And I think that because people experience him as a man who lived in this truth, that he was not as divisive as he might have been otherwise or became earned the respect of so many. He said, hold only love, only peace in your heart, knowing that the battle for good to overcome evil is already won. And this is encouraging. It reminds us that ultimately it is not our responsibility to win the battle over evil. God has done that in and through the cross, death and resurrection of Jesus. We are called to live into that, to claim it's true, and to be co-creators with God in bringing that to reality in our world. And that's where it's time to speak. To speak not out of judgment, not out of anger, not out of fear, but in love. To hope for that one who even appears to us to be a weed in the midst of the field. That love, that peace, and that joy that is the sign of the kingdom. To speak not because we would correct, but we would hope for better for all. And so I invite you, one, to begin also the process of looking at the weeds in your own field. Looking at what you would see as weeds around you. Asking God to give you the patience to wait and trust upon the coming of the kingdom. And at the same time, the strength and the courage to speak, to act, to live lives of courage, integrity, and justice to name the reality of evil, hatred, and injustice in our world, and to call all to the vision that Jesus had for the coming kingdom, and to do it in love. Amen. Let us continue with the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. For only give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask in our ignorance and asking. 
have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask for the worthiness of your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen O God you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your son our Lord Jesus Christ Grant us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to Donald, the President of the United States, and to Mike, our governor, and to our mayors and all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your faith and fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who created all peoples in your image, we thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by the ever, ever widening circles of fellowship, and assure us your presence in those who differ most from us. Until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayer for all parish families, and especially for Grace Church, for St. Matthew's Church, and for St. Mark's Church, all parishes in the Diocese of Ohio, and the faith communities of all who join us in worship this day. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we remember before you all who suffer in body, mind, body, or spirit. Grant to each of them and to us the constant awareness of your loving concern and healing power and restore each of them and us to health and wholeness of life, both now and forevermore. We especially pray for all those who are infected with the coronavirus and others who suffer. Remember them in aloud or silently. We pray for Dorothy Duckworth as she recovers from heart surgery. And for others we name silently or aloud. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join in the general thanksgiving and the prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble and hearty thanks for all your good, humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by walking before you, by giving of ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now our desires of petition, fulfill now, O Lord, our desires of petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the ages to come, life everlasting. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and ask your prayers as, as Kay and I leave on vacation for a couple of weeks. Next Sunday, worship services will include a tape service at 10 a.m. on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Morning prayer with Dr. Norman Jones, the president of OSU Mansfield as the preacher. St. Matthew's Church will have a 10 a.m. outside service of morning prayer and there will be a 4 p.m. service Jazz on the Grass Even Song at Grace Church, again with Dr. Jones preaching and with Dave, Dr. David Crane and Dave Kana, a superb saxophonist, 
of supplying the music. So I invite you to plan on being a part of those services as well. Thank you and may God be with you on your journey in the coming weeks. Amen.